Hello and welcome to another episode of Forkful of Noodles. I am Chris Mohan. Vance. Now that sounds like the next rump from the National Lampoon franchise, but it's actually a Supreme Court case. Vance versus Ball State University actually redefines what the word supervisor means in sexual harassment cases. It says that a supervisor is anyone that has tangible employment powers. That means powers to fire, hire, promote, things like that. Because of this definition change of what a supervisor actually is, 43 Supreme Court cases have been dropped in the last two years. Not only is this atrocious to women's rights, but also how ballsy is it of the Supreme Court to just redefine a word? I mean, that power is reserved for certain people and institutions like Oxford, Merriam-Webster, and Urban. 43 cases, like the case of Samantha Stabenchek, who worked at Safeway at age 17. Samantha was constantly sexually harassed by Jose Lopez, who was her front-end manager. He was even there when she had to sign all those employment forms that you have to sign, you know, the I-99, the T-1000. If you work at Walmarts, the forms that they make you sign in your blood, and then they make you drink goat's blood, and they do that eyes wide shut party, you know that one. Lopez would constantly sexually harass Samantha, to the point where she finally complained, and there was an internal investigation, and Lopez was fired. Great, right? But that's not the end of the story. Eventually, Samantha and her mom were forced to quit because they were entangled in a coupon controversy. Apparently, if you accuse a manager of sexual harassment, Safeway will not take competitors' coupons. They did eventually file a sexual harassment case against Safeway, but because of the changing definition of what a supervisor is, Lopez got away and Safeway wasn't liable for any of his actions. 43 cases like the case of Patricia Stanley, who delivered her baby in a hospital in Ohio, and when the nurse supervisor came in, he squeezed her breasts, asked her if she still got wet down there, and then he put his hand on her stomach and asked if the doctor missed one. Holy shit, have you never been around women at all? This is like just as bad as asking her if she's fat or pregnant. That is ridiculous. Have you, like, not heard of Bedside Manor at all? Did you not watch any episode of Grey's Anatomy or ER or Scrubs where they taught you how to do that shit? And f even when Patricia sued the hospital for, se for sexual harassment, he got away with it because of the change in definition of what a supervisor is. This makes absolutely no sense considering the word supervisor is on his stupid name tag. It's all, that, that's basically what the word is that you're arguing, right? And the other thing is, Patricia didn't go in there to apply to be an orderly. She went in there to have a baby delivered. She's not an employee of the hospital, so how is this the same thing? So the real question is, what does the word supervisor have to do with sexual harassment? Not a goddamn thing. These companies need to take accountability for their employees that are harassing other employees by sending them lewd tests and making aggressive gestures at them. I mean, really, it's making your workplace unworkable and very uncomfortable. Listen, Charlie, I see you in the break room rubbing your chest hair. It's making everybody uncomfortable, and quite frankly, it's a little gross. Okay, the 70s are over. This is not what's in style anymore, all right? The point is, Vance should be reversed. It's promoting this old idea, you know the idea from the days of the Mad Men when secretaries were called dames and babes or whatever the old men said while they drank their whiskey? And no one said anything about it because they were distracted by how shiny the space program was. Well, NASA's dead now, so we have no excuse and no distraction for why this should be occurring. So Supreme Court, you guys need to get your shit together and reverse this case.